Hello and welcome to Refuse. As always, I'm Plume Noir and the week of pain continues. Now you may notice uh, I got the table here, you hear the humming in the background. I am in the lab. I have to work a double, so come into the lab to you know get a review out while I'm taking a little break here. And yeah, for pain week part three, we have Hex Wives. Now, I've <laughs> I've talked a lot about this book. Um, I've had my issues with it. I've had you know, kind of good, bad with it. You know, I th I think there's a lot of potential in this. You know, that we have kind of the whole neither side is good. Um, and, you know, that's the thing. Are there any likable protagonists in Vertigo right now? I don't think there are. I, I, I don't think there are any protagonists that aren't pretty much villains. Um, you know, goddess mode, maybe? And maybe that one falls under. Um, God, oh, uh, uh, there's uh, the American Carnage. Uh, really haven't touched on that one, but yeah, these books are pretty bad. This is really a shame for Vertigo. Now, at the end of the last issue, um, basically the witches find out about their power. They find out what has been going on in this faux 50s American suburbia lifestyle. It, that it's all a lie. That's all been just pretty much uh, a Step Stepford Wife's situation. So, how? what is the fallout of this? Where can the series go from here, basically? Um, and, you know, I've had my thing that I would have liked to have seen that, uh, you know, like Aaron and Iz, um, uh, Izzy actually have a thing for one another, and it doesn't quite happen. Um, and you know, let's pop into it, because I have to be careful, because i got to skip the first page, because we do get Shining-esque old woman titties. So, but by the second page, she turns into a giant werecat monster, and attacks the guy who's shooting her, and just, you know, kills him. Before she eventually, you know, she's at her weakest, and she disintegrates. You know, she is, you know, one of the mother witches, I guess you would say one of the elders. And... So we have, um, <laughs> Aaron's found out, and he's like, you know, F this. And uh, so Iz goes up to follow him, and I begin to think you might not be an architect. Izzy, you have to understand, I did this to help, I'm an ally. Oh, all is forgiven then. Really? I'm, yeah. Okay, I'm being sarcastic. But you don't understand. You, all of you witches, you drowned a city. Now this is the point I keep bringing up. The witches are not good. We've been seeing that, and you know, in a previous issue, I think it's where his Aaron's father is killed, is in uh, Katrina back in um, Hurricane Katrina back in 2005, which Aaron, you know, maybe he's lying, but it didn't look like it. You know, definitely happened that um, they killed his father during Katrina. You know, maybe he's lying that they caused it or they're responsible, but yeah, he's making it seem that they are responsible. Um, you all found each other, and, and so the ballast shifted. Your power grew. We couldn't let that power go unchecked. You know, this is about your fear. You weren't just keeping to yourselves, though. You have no idea what you even are. You know, at the minimum, you've unlocked your power by consorting with the devil. You're monsters, creatures. You birthed a catastrophe that left 2,000 dead and a city crawling from its grave. And you lie. Sometimes. Not now. The others wanted to kill you. I came up with this to save you. And, uh, you know, he says that, you know, because you're not just seven, there are hundreds of you, and I can help you free the others. So he's going to roll on them. And, you know, that's the thing I've been having with the, the series is that in the early issues, we're shown that the, the witches aren't just, like, trying to live their lives. You know, they're going out and attacking. They're pretty much evil. You know, with the guys... What the men did, you know, with this whole Stepford Wives thing is not good. I'm not saying that, you know... Um, that that they're you know innocent here, but they are they're on the defense. They could have killed these characters. They could have done so much worse. You know they're trying to give them some type of idealistic life. And yeah, it's a fantasy, fifties Americana. Yeah, you can say you know the bad stuff about that. Um, but once the the secret was discovered, I wanted to see that maybe there were some type of relationships formed that you know there was an understanding and um you know she even says at one point that uh you know 
you know, um, instead of kidnapping and brainwashing seven women, you know, instead of having an effing conversation. Yeah, because <laughs> we've seen hundreds of years of history that didn't work. Okay, maybe they never tried the conversation, but it was always, would that have worked? <laughs> would that have worked? Um, so now this turns into basically a revenge fic. And um, so the, the women are now um, going after their supposed husbands. And the worst part of this is this character, Becky, the first one who discovered her powers, the one who floated, she has written really badly in this. Um, you know, she's got the flame powers, and uh, you know, she's also the only one that swears. I'm going to cook you and eat you, mother effers. And it's going to be a slow fire pit roast that's going to keep you screaming for days. When the only fat one is talking about cooking and eating you. Yeah. So her husband is trying... Her hus husband is trying to say, uh, Bex, Becky, Bex, you, you don't understand. I really liked you. It's why I asked to be placed with you. I think you're... You're fucking, you're effing dope, Becky almost swore. And then she says, only effing dope I see here. Um, and she's throwing flames and, Becky, girl, you're my bun bun. The eff you talking about, Ryan, I'm not your bun, I'm your kink. You just want to make it with a black girl so you can say the N word. <sighs> really? Really? Writer Ben Blacker is sending back interracial relationships. You know, so he's so that's a kink. Liking a white dude liking a black girl is a kink. <sighs> yeah, that that that's this book. So, and then she says, "So get with this, ya Marky Mark." Um, I have a question here. Um. How does she know who Marky Mark is? I mean, I mean, granted, we're going back 20 years at music here when Mark Wahlberg was, you know, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. But I'm um, presuming they don't really have memories of their life before. And, you know, 20 years ago, she would have been, you know, I'm guessing she's in her 30s, so she would have been a teen. And uh, Okay. So, yeah, then she burns him. Yeah. Now, you get the impression that some of these guys are actually here, you know, granted they're cooperating with the illusion and everything, but it seems a little harsh what they're doing here. Um, you know, uh, not given a chance to explain, at least Aaron is getting that chance. And uh, so one of the husbands said, you know, this is not going well here. I feel like I've been lied to. Oh, do you? Do you feel lied to? That's such a forced line, really. Really? This is not going well here. I feel like I've been lied to. What were you lied to about? No, that line was just set up so that they could turn it on and, you know, uh, make him seem like, yeah, that's stupid. You know, he says, I do kind of, yeah. You know, oh, well, please forgive me. I hate for you men to feel demi uh, diminished. Does anyone else <laughs> feel betrayed in any way? You know, the one dude raises his hands. Uh, Eric, put your hand down. You know, Nadia, I really like you. You can't say I treated you badly. I took care of you, right? What did I do for you? You're just lucky you're a malevolent doofus, uh, Eric, or I'd have Becky boast you, roast you as well. Wait, a malevolent doofus? Uh, uh, so, you know, you're an idiot, but you're an evil idiot. You know, so, so it's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah, she yells that, you know, uh, he treated her like a child. You wouldn't even let me kill a spider. And then she gets that head s slapping. I could have had a V8. Oh, ha ha. You wouldn't let me kill a spider because we have the blood magic. You were afraid. I'm half surprised it doesn't say because I'm a silly woman and I couldn't figure that out for myself. Yeah. So, yeah, it gets, you know, they're, they're, the guys are arguing. They're turning on each other when June suddenly uh, has an eye-rolling orgasm, I guess. No, she, she's just having visions. And we see here, it looks like she's having visions of the future. Um, 
you know, you know, backs behind you. Um, you know, we see the one guy says, I know where the mothers are. And, you know, we don't float. And, wait, who are these women kissing? Who's with the shaved head? And, yeah, so, June, what'd you see? We don't float. Hope you two enjoy each other's company because what they're going to do, see this page, is they're going to um, trap those two guys in the bunker in the basement that's under the house that's been monitoring everything. So, yeah, the guys are turning on each other. You know, the one that Faith being burned is going to bash Eric with the wheelchair. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we need to do something. Yeah, we do. What am I going to do, sick a cat on him? You know, cat really wants that. So, um, uh, uh, she's, Becky is going to roast him alive. And here we have, like, probably one of the good bits. You know, you see, he's still alive. But his wife, the one that went catatonic, actually saved him. You know, actually, she turned to stone and protected him. You know, she says, he says, Mabel, thank you. And she just says, F you. So, yeah, she's hurt, but at least here's what I've been saying since the beginning. It would have been much more interesting if we saw some type of interplay like that where, you know, even though these are roles, they find that they need one another. They like one each other, you know, like one another. Um, I got to start skipping stuff here, but, yeah, <laughs> even though um, Mabel saved him, it's not going to make a difference because, you know, you know, he's just in there, you know, looking sadly. But, you know, here comes the cat, and the cat claws inside of him and kills him by coming out of his mouth. You know, you okay? Much better. So, yeah, there was that little bit of redemption we could have had. Yeah, it's it's been killed. I got to start skipping here because uh, we, we do find that Mabel doesn't want to deal with the coven. She doesn't want to be one of the witches. She wants kind of the cycle to end, it seems. But Aaron is going to help them, uh, you know, um, find the, free the other witches. So I'm going to skip to the end because it's really, really bad. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, let me find that that one scene here. You know, I told you about Becky here. <laughs> look at this. She puts on a cape and, can I just say it? We look effing lit. So, yeah, they all change their looks and, you know, is a uh, is a... Dora shaves her head and smears her makeup. And yeah, look, look at Becky. Look at that big grin. This is all an adventure. She <laughs> and yeah, it's the beginning. So this book is dumb. It really is. You know, now it's turned into what do I always say? It turns into that revenge fantasy, it, which is really, really a shame. Because it almost looked like a few issues ago that uh, Aaron actually had feelings for Isadora. And we saw in here that uh, Becky's husband um, liked her. And uh, uh, Mabel's husband liked her. You know, we could have gone something. And Mabel, we see, um, actually protected her husband. I keep saying that. You know, the interaction, you know, they could have taken this, you know, we have, you know, two sides that aren't good. You know, uh... And, you know, you could say, and I've been saying this since the beginning, the guys almost seem more like they're acting out of self-defense. Are they doing it the right? No, 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 it's not the right way. But they could have worked together and find out, hey, we're stronger together. You know, instead of being at war, come together. You know, I, I can't help but think about uh, that song by Joe Jackson, you know, uh, if there's war between the sexes, then there'll be no people left. Yeah, that's kind of... Where you could have gone with this? No. No, now it's just a bigger thing. We find out there are more witches, hundreds of witches. And, yeah, it's like, where does this book go now? I mean, they're not technically hex wives anymore. Um, yeah, I don't know where the book can go. And the the writing is bad. The dialogue is really, really bad. Um, <laughs> and, and, and Becky gets the worst of it. And uh, she gets some really cheesy lines. And uh, there is one part where she says, when they go downstairs into the bunker and they see that they've been filmed, she says, oh, do they have footage of me flying? I would have liked to have seen that. Well, yeah, that's about the only believable thing. But she goes on and says that she's her, she's, uh, her husband's kink. Really? Anyway, I like this cover. Um, you know, she's got her blood magic going here. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
it, it, this this just screams, you know, uh, Bewitch with Elizabeth Montgomery. So, yeah, I, I like this cover. Um, but, yeah, this book is, is dumb. Has it really been six months since uh, Halloween? Because it seems to me I reviewed the first issue on Halloween or maybe a day or two within that. Uh, it seems to me it's right around that. So, wow, it's already been six months about that? Huh, go figure. Uh, anyway, yeah, this book is dumb. Now, I did say that Pain Week was, you know, three parts, you know, Goddess Mode, um, Hex Wives, of course, and Man Eaters, but Heroes in Crisis also came out, so, oh, I better get back to work. Um, yeah, this book, this book is dumb. I'm going five o'clock. Five o'clock. There is so much potential, so much to make it interesting, but no, it's, it's just a more focused Man Eaters, really. Yeah, that's about what it is. And, you know, with the exception of uh, Mabel, uh, not Mabel, uh, Becky, and um, who's the youngest daughter? Of our, the, the, the young girl. I've already blanked on her name. Pretty much with the exception of those two characters, if you can't tell any of the other main characters apart by their speech bubbles, by the way they talk. They're pretty interchangeable. And now that we have some of them changing their looks and everything, it's... These characters don't really have any real depths. You know, a, a couple of them do, but, you know, Mabel's the catatonic one. You know, oh, shoot, I didn't mean to show the first page. Sorry. Sorry, YouTube. Um, and, uh, you know, Isadora, who's pretty much the, 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 the face of this book. And she's, you know, sometimes I mix her up with uh, the other one, the one that's a little bit darker. I've already blinked on her name, this one right here. Um, actually, yeah, I can mix up several of these. You know, these are these three, these two, and even Mabel, because she doesn't say much, are the only two that really stand out with any type of personality. So, yeah, this book's dumb. I, I don't see how this book can continue. I, I don't see where it can go from here. But anyway, I'm calling it a night. I got to get back to work, and uh, hopefully I'll get to Heroes in Crisis tomorrow. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. And pre please, please pray for me. P pray that I make it through this week of horrible comics. <laughs> All right, thanks. I'll see you next time.